Krishna Productions presents the Ramayana or the story of Lord Ram. It is a work of great antiquity attributed to the illustrious sage Valmiki. Its date of composition cannot be fixed with any certainty, particularly as, in common with other Sanskrit classics, it was not at first committed to writing, but was passed on from singer to singer. Written in poetry of unsurpassed dramatic power and brilliance, the Ramayana contains 24,000 couplet verses or shlokas. Unfortunately, we know very little about the Rishi or sage Valmiki. We do know that he was once a robber in a forest in northern India, and on one occasion waylaid two saints for the purpose of plundering them. The travelers, however, spoke to him with kindness and offered him spiritual truth instead of the gold and silver which they did not possess. Convinced of their sincerity and on their advice, Valmiki changed his way of life and became a devotee of Lord Ram, who was the seventh incarnation of God or Lord Vishnu on earth. Throughout the ages, the Ramayana has exerted a tremendous moral influence on men and women everywhere. Lord Ram is considered the ideal or supreme person, and in his daily life he manifested the highest degree of virtue, truth, compassion, justice, benevolence, valor, and chivalry, as we shall see. The following narration of the Ramayana is based on the abridged translation from the Sanskrit by Chakravarti Rajagopalachari and was published by Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan in Bombay, India. It contains all the important incidents of the original complete epic and was specially edited for this presentation by your narrator, Amala Bhaktadas. The story begins with the visit of Saint Narad one morning to the sage Valmiki's ashram. After the usual welcome, Valmiki asked him, O all-knowing Narad, tell me, who among the heroes of this world is the highest in virtue and wisdom? Knowing through his supernatural power why Valmiki put this question, Narad answered, Lord Ram is the hero that you ask for. Born in the solar dynasty, he is at present ruling in Ayodhya. Sage Narad then briefly narrated to Valmiki the story of Ram. So impressed was Valmiki when he heard Ram's story that even long after Narad had left, his mind was pondering it as he went to the river Tamasa for his morning bath. As he was walking along the river bank, he saw in a nearby tree two loving croucher birds sporting and singing in their joy of life and love. Suddenly, the male bird fell down, hit by a hunter's arrow. The female bird, seeing her lover rolling on the ground, lamented in piteous fashion. Observing this, Valmiki burst into a curse. O oh, hunter, as you have killed one of these love-intoxicated birds, you will wander homeless all your long years. But in a moment, the sage recovered himself and was wondering why he lost himself in anger. What right had I to curse the hunter? Why was I deceived by emotion? Recalling the words of his curse, the Rishi marveled at the rhythm of the words. He discovered that his pity had taken shape in a beautiful verse. He thought that all this was part of the mysterious Leela or play of God and went into meditation. To Valmiki in meditation appeared the four-faced Brahma and he said, Be not afraid. These things happen to start you on the story of Ram. From sorrow sprang verse, and in this meter and rhythm, the story should be told. I shall give you the vision to see all that happened, yes, even how the characters thought and looked, as clearly as one sees a thing lying on the palm of one's hand. And you shall sing it with my blessings for the benefit of the world. Valmiki and his disciples then repeated the verse again and again and fixed its pattern firmly in their minds. Then Valmiki composed the Ramayana in that meter and taught it to his disciples. Thus was the holy Valmiki Ramayana born, the story of the Lord and his consort born on earth, 
and establishing righteousness was sung by the sage in words of matchless beauty. And Brahma's words have come true, which were, As long as the mountains stand and the rivers flow, so long shall the Ramayan be cherished among men and save them from sin.